Welcome to today's service. It's fantastic to have you with us. And today we're going to begin our service with our call to worship from Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past. Let the favour of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. O oh, prosper the work of our hands. We sing together, I serve a risen Saviour. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever man may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives, He lives, He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. God of wonder and joy, God of surprise and hope, God of welcome and solace, God of peace and love, we come. Filled with the wonder at this world we live in, filled with joy in the quiet moments, filled with surprise at the bursting of spring, Filled with hope for the fruits of summer. Filled with the welcome you offer each day. Filled with solace for our losses and grief. Filled with your peace amidst bustle and noise. Filled with your love unexpected, undeserved. We come. Our cup overflows with your mercy and grace. Love beyond measure, pressed down, shaken together, flowing over, more than we could ever imagine. 
Forgive us, God, for those times we grimly commiserate on how difficult life is while giving no thought to the blessings you bring us. Forgive us for losing sight of the wonder and joy and surprise and hope you offer. Forgive us for becoming lost in ourselves and failing to see you in every moment of our day. We bring our private confessions to you now. Tell my people I love them, called to know love in place of condemnation, called to experience grace in the face of despair, called to be my people in this place and this time in Christ. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. Our first reading today is from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, reading verses 1 to eight. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you, that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Lord, open our eyes and our hearts to your word today. Creating is never simple. When we create something, no matter what it is, we invest ourselves in whatever it is we're working on. It may be as simple as a cake or a small garden. It may be as complex as a new job or even a family. Whatever it is we are creating, there's more to it than simply snapping our fingers and behold, a new thing appears. But wait, there's more. Another layer to creating is how we think about what we are creating. Is it purely out of necessity to get a job done, to move on to things we would rather do? Or is it more than that? Is it a labour of love, driven by a desire to do the best we can with what we have? Let me illustrate with a personal example. I've done a lot of driving this week. A bit over 1,200 kilometres in total. To be honest, quite enough for one week and I'm feeling fairly tired. Then last night my daughter called, quite distressed. Her oldest boy, who is nearly five, is a wonderful ball of challenges. He hates being in one place for more than a few minutes at a time and is a regular Houdini when it comes to escaping. He's recently taken to climbing the fence into the neighbour's property and playing in places that are not safe for little people. Unfortunately, he's also been helping his little brother to escape as well, something that needs no encouragement. Part of his problem is that he has no sense of danger at all. Some small people are fearful of what they don't know or of hurting themselves. None of that with him. So Alicia called last night to tell me that he'd escaped yet again and had little brother along for the run. Only she could work out where he had gone, but there was no sign of little brother. Of course, she panicked as she hunted high and low, and finally found him being carried toward her by a couple of women out for a walk. An awful experience for a mother. 
This has led to Sam, my son-in-law, purchasing some materials to bolster the fencing before he goes to work on the west coast on Monday. I knew he was going to struggle to get done what needed doing in time. So I've offered to go to Christchurch tomorrow, returning in the evening, to help with the fence reinforcing. Alicia's first reaction was, Dad, you're so busy. My reaction was, and my grandson is incredibly important, as are you and the rest of your family. Yes, I am busy and I am tired. And this is, for me, a labour of love. It's a task driven by a desire to do the best I can with what I have. Then when I read verse 8 from 1 Thessalonians 2, it rang so very true with me. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves. I've begun to realise over the last few years that the church I've been part of for my whole life has, over the last few years at least, to a large extent majored on sharing the gospel and minored on sharing ourselves. By then I'm not referring to individuals who so often do share of themselves deeply. But there's little said from the pulpit about that sharing. It's been left to this person here and that person there to do what they can perhaps helping with the food bank or packing parcels for Christmas, maybe sharing a meal with a lonely person or visiting someone stuck at home. But let's go deeper than that. Paul came to the Thessalonians like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. Take a moment to think about the small children you are closest to or have been closest to. Think about how you respond to them. You would do anything within your power to care for them, look after them. And this is where I think we can begin to learn a deep lesson about our faith. We are created to create, to create in this amazing world. What we create is unique to each of us. By creating, we acknowledge our creator. And when we create with love and the desire to do the best we can, no matter what it is we are creating, we are giving glory and honour to our Creator. That is rather special. We're going to sing together. Amazing love. Forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. And I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. I'm forgiven because you were. I'm accepted
Our second reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 to 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Why do you test someone? Sometimes it's to see what they know, to work out their competencies and see whether they're ready to go to the next level. Or perhaps to see if they're as good as they say they are. School exams or licence testing are good examples. Other times, it is to put someone on the spot, to make life difficult for them or show them up in front of others. If I set you a task that you can't perform, then that makes me look better by way of contrast. It tells other people that I am better than you. Playground fights are often a good example of this kind of testing in action. Look to Parliament and we see playground fights taken to the next level and Justified because the people doing the fighting get to make the rules. The test we see in Matthew is more of the playground variety. The Pharisees are trying to put Jesus on the spot with what they view as a trick question. They had, at best count, 613 laws. Felony laws, like don't kill someone, and low level laws like give a tenth of your dill and mint. They ranked their laws, but all the laws were considered equally great because they were all given by God. To their surprise, Jesus answered with a double-edged sword. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind was an answer that most Pharisees would likely have given. The thing is, it was an answer you would expect from a trained theologian, not a semi-literate peasant like Jesus. So there was surprise one. The second edge to the sword was to love your neighbour as yourself. To a legalistic rule follower, this was a devastating blow. Love and rules rarely coexist easily. One reason for this uneasy relationship is that love will often sidestep rules to ensure that the other is cared for. Love sees rules as necessary boundaries that don't always fit the situation and will move those boundaries when they get in the way of serving the other. A nice example is that of the Good Samaritan. The rules-bound Pharisees and leaders exhibited no love as they strove to follow the law. It was the love-filled Samaritan who stepped over the boundaries to serve the wounded traveller. I can hear Jesus asking the Pharisees, Will you love your neighbour like the nurse tenderly caring for her own children? The Pharisees look around at each other and 
have no response because they understand that from the Ten Commandments on down, loving God and loving your neighbor are absolutely central. Remove either one of these commandments and the whole of the law, all 613 of them, come crashing down. And so the test spins around and puts them on the spot. If Jesus had simply stopped at loving God, everyone would have shrugged their shoulders and moved on. By broadening the focus to include how we treat our other, our question suddenly becomes more than an intellectual exercise. It is no longer merely a legally interesting inquiry designed to show up someone's lack of training. Now it takes aim at people's behaviour toward their other. Now it is about what I do, not just what I think. Now it is about how deeply I love the other in the face of all those rules that I find so important. On the surface, Jesus' answer seems pretty obvious. I do wonder how often we allow that answer to gloss over all the ways we creatively invent to avoid truly loving our other. I dare not associate with those people lest I be tainted by them. I think their habits are disgusting. I don't want anything to do with them. They're dirty. They smell bad. Their houses are disgusting. I don't agree with their politics. I don't agree with their opinions on climate, on economics, on freedom of speech, on race, on, well, the list goes on. Now I don't have to love them. I can push them away because they are other. And Jesus says, love your other as you love yourself. It is as important as loving God with all your heart and soul and mind. Perhaps when you get the balance right, you'll begin to create as I have made you to create. We pray. God of deep and abiding love, we are so often slow to see how loving you is only one part of the equation of life. You've made us to be in community at our very heart. And being in community is so very hard, especially when we don't like some of our community. Help us to learn how to love our other like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. Help us to learn to love our other as we love ourselves. Help us to create with love and desire to do the best we can and to give you all the glory and honour. Through Jesus who loved and loved and loved again. Amen. We sing together. Just let me say how much I love you.
We bring our gifts and offerings before God. God of unimaginable love. You've given us so much and asked so little. Jesus calls us to love you with our whole being. Love our neighbours and love ourselves. For that simple price, you've given us everything and promised to love us and not desert us. It is a covenant more generous than anyone could imagine. And yet, how often we fail to keep the bargain. We love you when it is convenient and will not embarrass us before others. We pick and choose which neighbours we love as we pick and choose when we will love ourselves. As we dedicate our gifts this morning to bringing acts of love, may we also resolve to better keep our side of your covenant of love. In Christ we pray. Amen. We bring our prayers for others and ourselves. For the people of Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, Yemen, Syria, Sudan, Armenia, Yemen, Haiti, Venezuela, and all the other countries around the world racked by violence and fighting, we pray. For leaders around the world as they wrestle with economics and demographics and politics, we pray. For the leaders of our country, nationally and locally, as they work to serve our communities and do their best to build a better future. For the churches of our community, new and old, strong and struggling, busy and aimless. For the pastors and ministers, for the councils and leaders, we pray. For ourselves, our friends and families, our hopes and dreams and fears and disappointments, those who are unwell, those who are travelling. All these things we pray through Christ who taught us this prayer. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We sing together, the King of love, my shepherd is.
And so as we go on from here, may we go as a people living in deep love with and for God, with and for the other. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace, God's much-loved people.